Hello and welcome to the Tool Lending Library at the Smart Building Center, an energy efficiency innovation space for commercial and institutional buildings. Our focus is showcasing where smart meets efficient. And we offer state-of-the-art training and meeting spaces, educational resources such as this training video, and our Tool Lending Library offers a wide spectrum of monitoring and diagnostic tools available for free. So to create an account and check out our tools, go ahead and visit our website at www.smartbuildingcenter.org. So a common strategy to reduce heat loss from boiler distribution systems is to reset the supply temperature based on demand or outside air temperature. And so we'll look at using data loggers to record and verify whether this reset strategy is working properly. So first we'll configure the loggers and the loggers we'll be using today for this demo are uh, Hobo logger. This is the U120 four channel analog data logger. This is a very versatile logger. It has these four ports for an external sensor and you can use various types of sensors. So the one we'll be using today is this. It's a flat plate sensor for measuring the hot water supply pipe from your boiler. And you can find out uh, what type of sensor this is. There's a little label on the on the cable, this one we're using the TMC-HE series. Sometimes the uh, model will be stamped into the sensor itself as in this other type of sensor, but uh, you'll, that's important to know so that you can configure the logger properly. Now the other logger we'll be using is this Hobo U12 temperature relative humidity and light sensor. This also has a port for an external sensor and it uh, is, can provide some versatility as well. So we'll go ahead and start configuring the first logger here. I've got the Hoboware Pro software pulled up on my computer and I'm just going to go ahead and plug the logger. It has a little mini USB port. I'm going to go ahead and plug that into the computer using this cable here. Okay, so you can see down here in the lower right hand corner that we have one device connected. That's the logger we just connected and up here in the upper left hand corner we have a little icon with an arrow pointing to the right. That's the launch device icon. So I'll click that. Okay, and I want to go ahead and give it a name for the file and then we just need this one sensor. So this is our temperature sensor that will be connected to the logger. Um, you obviously have a lot of options to choose from for sensors. We're going to choose this temperature sensor TMC-HE series and then want to give it a, a label that will make sense on the graph. Boiler supply temp. I'm going to leave this interval at five minutes. The duration tells you how much room you have on the logger to store data at the logging interval that you've chosen. Now, since we're deploying two different loggers and we're going to plot the data for both loggers on the same graph, we want to choose to start logging on a specific date and time. And you want both loggers to start on the same date and time. That makes it a lot easier when you pull the data into the graph. Okay, so we can go ahead and click, click delayed start here. So we're done configuring the logger and we can go ahead and unplug it and then we'll go ahead and plug the next one in so that we can configure this one as well. So go ahead and just plug it into the little mini USB there. And you see that it has been connected. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this step and hit launch device. Okay, we want a name for the file and that is, I'm just naming it school outside air temperature. We just need the temperature in this case. I'm going to give it a label, outside air temp. Leave it at five minutes, same interval as the other logger and also the same date and time 
to start. So I'll click Delayed Start, and that logger is ready to go. All right, so now that we've configured both loggers, we can go ahead and head to the boiler room where we can capture some data. So in the boiler room, you'll first want to identify the supply pipe coming off of the boiler. And you'll want to place the temperature sensor in a section of insulated pipe at least 12 to 18 inches in length. This is to ensure that you're measuring the pipe temperature and that it's not affected by ambient influences. When removing your insulation, make sure to do so carefully so that you can replace it in good condition easily. And you'll apply a small amount of thermal paste to the pipe. This is also known as a thermal compound or thermal grease. And this helps with the thermal transfer to the sensor. You'll apply a thin, even layer, just enough to help the sensor make contact with the pipe. And before placing the sensor, you want to prepare a way to secure it to the pipe, ideally with a hose clamp. In this case, I used a long zip tie. This is a condensing low temperature boiler, but a zip tie wouldn't necessarily be appropriate in higher temperature applications or for longer term. So really, a Hose clamp is ideal. So you place the sensor so that the cable runs in line with the pipe, secure it, and then replace the insulation. You can then plug the other end of the cable into the data logger, which has handy magnets on the back side, so you can just stick it to any metal surface nearby. We'll leave this in place for a couple of weeks. So you'll also want to place your Hobo U12 temperature data logger in an outdoor location that's sheltered from the sun and the rain. This will collect the outdoor temperatures and you wanna leave this logging for at least a couple of weeks as well. Okay, we're back. And we have the loggers here full of data. So we're gonna go ahead and reconnect and retrieve this data so we can take a look at what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this four channel logger back in and my device is connected and I'm going to this time go up to the upper left hand corner and click read out device. And this is the icon with the arrow pointing to the left. Okay, I want to save this. And go ahead and click some data to plot, which is this temperature. And here we have a graph of the data from the boiler supply temperatures. So you can see a lot of peaks and valleys here. Uh, this, where you see this big dip here, this is actually about a day and a half of where the boiler was offline uh, and then it resumes operation. So now we we'll want to bring in our data from the outside air temperatures. Okay, so now that we've got that data uh, ca captured and downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect from the USB and connect my second logger so we can download this data. And I'm going to read out this device. And I can go ahead and stop logging. Okay, I want to save it. And I can plot the temperature here. Okay, and we have our graph here of the outside air temperature. So it's fairly easy to merge this data set with the other data set. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and click over here on the left on the temperature plot for the outside air temperature. And I'm going to go up here to edit and I'm going to copy that series. Next I'm going to go back over to my other graph of the supply temperature and I'm going to go to edit and paste the series. 
So you can see here that we have a pretty clear pattern also with the outside air temperatures rising. And you can see that it lines up with the supply temperature dropping pretty consistently across the board. Of course, minus the anomaly of the section where the boiler was offline. But you can see that these peaks align with the valleys on the supply temperature. And that's what we're looking for, is for the control system to lower the supply temperature when the outside air temperature is higher. That's the function of the boiler reset function. So just in looking at this data, I can be pretty confident that our boiler reset function is working properly. Now, if you want to uh, change the properties of this graph, for example, if you have more data to import and things can get a little messy, you can go up here and click Edit and then um, go to Graph Properties. This will give you the option to, for example, change the color. So I can change it to red, for example. I can also change the type of line that it displays just to make that plot uh, a little more offset from the original data. All right, and we're done. So now that we have that data, uh, we can go ahead and disconnect here. And I've shown you how to uh, verify using data loggers that your hot water boiler reset function is working properly. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in this training series and visit our website at www.smartbuildingcenter.org. Thanks for watching.